Paradise Island. A Caribbean oasis where players venture to quench their thirst for glory. But it can feel like a mirage as the hope of victory glimmers in the distance. Most will perish on the journey, but for the survivors, treasure and a place in history await them. This is the main event of the 10th PokerStars.com PCA. As the new year dawns, poker players anxiously await the PCA. Over the last decade, it's become the place everyone wants to be in January. This year, the main event attracted almost 1,000 players, all hoping to take home a share of the $9.5 million prize pool. But only 500 made it through to day two, known for being one of the toughest, and today has been no exception. Last time, two superstars took their seats under the spotlights. Welcome to poker, my man. Thanks, buddy. 18-time Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps and the poker brat Phil Helmuth. But now we're playing. I will not fold again to one of your races. Michael the Grinder Mizraki dominated the early part of day two, climbing his way up the leaderboard. That's not good. Inside the Atlantis Poker Room, we are halfway through day two, and of the 500 players that began the day, only 260 remain. Eugene Kachilov is no stranger to success at the PCA. 2011 saw the Ukrainian follow up his super high roller win with a runner-up finish in the 10K Turbo and 74th place in the main. Yeah, it was just an insane PCA for me. <laughs> so I definitely like uh, reach that or beat it if I can. Joining him at the feature table is Canadian pro Jonathan Roy. He's near the top of our leaderboard today and is coming off a large score on home soil. When I won the WPT in Montreal, it was a huge fail. It was the biggest event in Canada in history. A win gave me a lot more confidence. From one individual eager to make history to a poker family with a proven pedigree, Two of the Mizraki brothers both final tabled the World Series of Poker Players Championship in 2010. I actually even busted Rob in fifth place, and I finished in first. Playing with my brother in the same tournament is kind of hard because definitely want to look after each other and make sure we both do well together. Players returning to their seats after the dinner break. Yeah, enough from the brothers. Let's see some sisters. Hi, Fatima. Hello. Hello, Tatiana. As long as that ring stays on that finger, I'll stay a huge fan. Oh, Olivia, uh, I've met someone new. Her name is Tatiana. She's Russian. And Mike McDonald, not a woman, but still attractive. And we've got some serious pedigree on our main feature table. Absolutely. Robert Mizraki, R. Miz, made the final table of this event in 2007 for almost half a million. Eugene Kachilov has only won almost $2 million here in the Bahamas. No big deal. Oh. And just a mill ball for Will Molson? What a loser! And those aren't the only big names on the table. We've also got EPT8 Grand Final Super High Roller Champ Justin Bonomo and Andrew Lichtenberger, AKA Lucky Chewy. Roy and Kachilov are the two big stacks. Ravi Ragavan is the shorty. Blinds currently 1,000, 2,000 with a 300 ante. Action has been folded to Jonathan Roy. Pocket Kings. He's racing, makes it 4,000. Ragavan and Mizraki both pass. Eugene Kachilov has pocket fours, and he calls. Everyone's deep, so calling with fours is beyond standard. The blinds fold, so we're going heads up to the flop. Two players with WPT titles, two players with big stacks competing here. If Eugene can hit a set, there's a chance he ends his hand with over 500K in chips. He doesn't, it's a queen-queen three flop. Here comes the C-bet. Jonathan Roy continuing for 5,400. I think it's reasonable for Eugene to call at least one bet. Maybe it's the best hand. Maybe he boats up. He does call. The turn card. 
the Jack of Diamonds. Another overcard now for fours. Eugene may give up to another bet. Jonathan Roy slows down. He checks. Solid check. Jonathan's assuming he can't get called by much, so he's hoping to induce a bluff. And I guess that's what this is, a bet of 12,000 from Kachalov. It actually might not be a bluff. He could be trying to protect his fours, maybe trying to get thin value from ace high. Fortunately, he's not getting value. He's giving it. Roy calls with the kings, and the river brings a deuce. See if Jonathan can go for thin value himself now. He checks again, and Kachalov will check behind. Both players just give up, hope their hand is good. Kings win, but you can't love the run out. Go Canadiens. Jonathan Roy now up to just shy of 283,000. Over to our secondary feature table, which hosts the other Mizraki brother, Michael. He's been playing a lot of hands today against Italy's Giacomo Fundero. Yeah, these two have tangled more often than a pair of earbuds. Mizraki has bluffed the river. Fundero, heroes with a nine. You got it. Oh. Oh, so I want to see his hand. <laughs> wow. Apparently, those are the pursed lips of a hero. Whoa. Though against Grinder, it's not always that tough to be a hero. I like my bet. Grinder fires more barrels than Captain Quint. He can't stay down, not with three barrels. <laughs> Speaking of swimming your way back to shore, Michael Phelps has got 18 Olympic gold medals in swimming. He's sharing a table with Matt Salzberg, the Hollywood producer with a WPT title to his name. And Christoph de Mulder also won a Matthias de Mulder lookalike contest. Staying on the outer tables, Jake Cody involved in a hand against former tournament chip leader Ramiro Petroni. Petroni check called the flop for 7,500. On the turn, he checks again. Interesting check. Couple of flush draws out there. Jake looks like he wants to bet again. He does. 15,500. Now, I would expect this bet to be pretty serious most of the time. Petroni has just check raised enough to put Jake all in. Well, let's see how serious Jake was. He calls. On their backs, Petroni has a flush draw. Jake Cody, Queens. Pretty easy call to make for Jake Queens. They're very strong on this board. And no heart on the river, so Jake Cody will double up through Petroni. Nice call. Take it down, Chief Cody. Boom. Three Jaws jokes in one part. Da -da. I'm not sure it's an achievement one should be proud of. <laughs> okay, all right. Liv Berea has just shoved over the top of a three bet from Timo Eckert. She's pretty short. It's like 38. Yep. And Eckert calls. He shows ace king. Liv has king jack. Olivia, oh boy. She's drawing dead on the turn. She's out of the PCA main event. Over. And her chips will slide across to Timo Eckert. Yeah, Liv's not going to be too happy about that. I think if you clown off your stack, you should have to do your walk off on a unicycle. Well, we're going to stay in the field because there's a major stack swinging contest kicking off between two of the tournament big stacks. That's a five bet. And a six bet. Small six bet. Do we think maybe one of Godoy's buttons accidentally ended up in the pot? And Maxim Lobzanidze will call. And with 137,000 in the middle, we will see a flop. Ace, queen, nine, rainbow. Boy, six bets before the flop. You got to think this board smacks somebody, if not everybody. It goes check, check. Of course it does. King of diamonds on the turn. And it goes check, check again. All right. Jack on the river. Well, there's everything. Godoy will now bet 100,000. And a quick call from Lobzanidze, who shows a set of jacks, but Godoy rivered a straight. Ew, <laughs> ugly river for Lobzanidze. And I think I know what happened to Godoy's buttons. He was clicking them before the flop. Well, after winning that pot, the 19-year-old Argentinian online qualifier becomes the new tournament chip leader with a stack of 420,000. Still riding high in the top 10, two of the players from our feature table, Eugene Kachalov and Jonathan Roy.
Now let's go back to the feature table. Well, we're going to sweat with Eugene Kachilov. I saw Eugene and Elke at the gym this morning. I already sweat with him today. All right, I'll do it. Andrew Lichtenberger under the gun, raising. Makes it 4,500. Jonathan Roy folds. Robert Mizraki will call. Eugene's hand, pocket jacks. After betting a call, I like three betting here in position. Maybe even get it in against one of these two guys. Eugene just calls from the cutoff. All right, well, Eugene obviously knows what he's doing, so we're going to assume that this is correct. Will Molson on the button. Yeah, except this flop's not going to go just three ways now. Everyone's going to have some ridiculous pot odds to take the flop. He calls as well. And Justin Bonomo in the big blind will also call. We're going to go five ways to this flop. Taking a flop five ways to Jax really is a sweat. 8-8-4, eight, eight, rainbow. Lichtenberger is going to continue. He bets 8,000. Hey, well, at least we're not up against any good players. Uh, Miss Rocky calls. Batting a call in front of us. Yikes. I think maybe we just call and reevaluate on the turn. Well, the Blues are worth 5,000 each. That's a raise from Eugene. A raise to 20,000. This is a really risky proposition, raising the guy who just bet into four people. Though there could be a dynamic here we're not privy to. Lichtenberger, the original pre-flop raiser, will call. As Rocky gets out of the way, he folded sixes. Yeah, once Chewie calls here, I really hate our hand. The only things we're beating that he calls with are like nines and tens. Seven on the turn. Lichtenberger checks. And Eugene bets 16,000. That is a teeny tiny bet. I don't expect Chewie's calling the flop than folding this turn very often. Wow! He does fold the turn. He had ace-king. Oh, yeah. There's always that floating the flop with ace-high. Well played by Eugene. Got value out of him with a flop raise. Love it. That's why he's won millions here. How do you feel about how Eugene and Andrew played that hand? Tweet your thoughts and tag your tweets. PCA10. Over the past 10 years at the PCA, the High Roller event has seen many familiar faces make the final table. But for three years in a row, Will Molson had a clear shot at the title. My favorite PCA memory would have to obviously be uh, winning the High Roller in 2011. I finally realized that third time's a charm after coming in second in the past two years. Will Molson picks up a nice paycheck. Two years in a row is the runner-up. By far, that's obviously my favorite memory. I like Will Molson because his name is also a question. Who's going to win this year's PCA? Will Molson? Nine previous PCA champions, and there will definitely be a tenth photo up there next year since none of these guys are still in the tournament. At our feature table, blind still 1,000, 2,000. We've lost Justin Bonomo. He's been eliminated. We still have Andrew Lichtenberger, and he's raising in late position to 4,500. Fold it around to Robert Mizraki in the big blind, and he will call with queen four suited. This is loose, but fine, especially when you've got a post-flop arsenal as big as our Miz. Mix Rocky likes to Miz it up. 9, 8, 7. Lichtenberger with second pair. Ms. Rocky donk leads for 5,600. Yeah, apparently part of that old mix is the donk lead on a scary board. Lichtenberger calls. Don't think Andrew could fold a pair, not yet at least. Another nine on the turn. And Ms. Rocky will continue firing. He bets again for 8,400. This turn's gonna look safe to Chewy. He's probably gonna have to call again. He does call. Now, if I were Robert, I might have even given up on that turn. It's pretty rare Chewie's going to call flop fold turn, so he's almost always going to have to triple barrel. Seven on the river. The board now double paired. And Ms. Rocky bets again. 20,000. I think Robert's going to get looked up here at least some of the time. Just not this time. The triple barrel bluff works. Wow, fast fold. Chewie knows he wasn't counterfeited, right? Well run, bluff, buddy. Get you some. Robert Ms. Rocky up to over 105,000. 
Let's check back on his brother Michael at the secondary feature table. With an equally impressive hand. At least 8-5 can technically connect. Govert Matar called in the small blind. Mizuraki checked his option and flops a straight. Technically it can connect, I told you. Matal checks. Mizuraki bets 3,000. Matal's open-ended. He calls. And if I know Grinder, he's gonna make like a drone and bomb every street. The turn is a jack, giving Matal top pair. He checks a second time. Grinder bets a second time. 12,000. Should be an easy check call for Matal, even though Grinder is still bombing. Mike could easily be doing this with a draw or worse. Matal will call the 12k. He's drawing dead to a chop. 36,000 in the middle. Ace on the river. Natal checks again. Time to bomb one last street. Main street. Value town. Grinder. Betting big by the looks of things. 59,000. Huge overbet. Twice pot. This is classic Grinder, and it's going to work out well for him a decent amount of the time because he's also quite likely to do this with nothing. Called by Natal. Whoops. I was straight. Yeah, I see it. I'm good. He is good at making straights with wacky cards. Although that was a limp pot, so I think maybe Matal could have gotten away from it. Just saying. Out in the field, Matt Salzberg is all in. I hope you He does not. He does, however, have you dominated. Kristen El Dimitri, huge favorite here. Even bigger favorite now. Ten on the river this time. No 10. Salzburg's out. The kid does not stay in the picture. Say goodbye to Hollywood. No weed spoilers. Big names falling all around. We've just lost Christoph de Mulder. You know what WTF stands for. Why the flips? That is pretty brutal, though. Better get out to the pool. Practice your flips on the high dive. Back to the feature table. It's been an early position race from Milan Chichka. Jonathan Roy has kings in the cutoff. And he just calls. Ooh. Sneaky. Both blinds fold, heads up to the flop, which gives Chichka second pair and gives Roy a set. Now this is a flop you don't really have to see bet. Most worse hands are falling and all better hands are calling. Chichka does continue for 7,300. So this is going to be a case where a better hand is going to call. Watch. There it is. Exhibit A. Inconsequential five on the turn. Now once he gets called in the flop, I think Chichka would do well to slow down here. Soul read. There are even fewer worse hands that will call now. I've said it before. I'll say it again. He can't hear you. And he bets 12,300. <laughs> okay, this is so Chichka. Once again. Roy just calls. A 10 on the river. Now Chichka has less than a pot-sized bet behind. What's it going to be for Chichka the button clicker? He checks. Once he checks, he's got to fold to a bet. And Roy is betting. Enough to put Chichka all in. Yeah, that pair of kings ain't looking so good now, is it? Nope. He folds. Well played by Jonathan. I think had Chichka had more chips, Jonathan would have raised at some point, but as it stood, he didn't have to. They're playing for stacks on the river regardless. Jonathan Roy, now up to nearly 375,000 in chips. So Roy, still a big stack, along with tablemate Eugene Kachilov, but it's the young Argentinian player, Nicolas Godoy, who remains the tournament chip leader. With 530,000, nearly four times the tournament average, a 265 big blind stack. Jonathan Roy is currently fourth in chips and in good position to take a run at another major title, only six weeks after winning a WPT event. My name is Jonathan Roy. I'm 25 years old and I'm from Boucherville, Quebec, Canada. I went to school with Jonathan Duhamel when I was young in high school and since then we've been friends and we started playing poker a little bit together. He's a reason where I'm at today. Back in uh, September I went to Europe with Jonathan and we stayed with Jersey Mercier, Vanessa Salps, and it was so amazing to just be with those guys and learn from them, watching them play. When I won the WPT in Montreal, it was a huge field. It was the biggest event in Canada in history. It was pretty nice because I lived just 30 minutes away from where it was played, and all my friends were there. 
when we came up to the final table, someone was in the stand cheering for Jeff Gross, a US player, and it was Michael Phelps. It was pretty amazing to see like someone like that come down to Montreal just to see a poker tournament, because he's one of the most recognized athletes in the world. It really surprised me, because usually uh, those kind of people, when they play tournaments, they just play for fun, but he seems to play very, very great. Uh, winning the PC would be a pretty big dream. Having a huge stack, I'm really pumped. I hope I can make a deep run. Well, there is Michael Phelps in the small blind facing a button race. Come on. And he comes over the top of Byron Caverman's open. <laughs> the only thing Michael Phelps has experienced less than losing was his childhood. Caverman gives it up. Michael Phelps wins again. <laughs> Boy, he really interacts with his fans. What a good guy. <laughs> I told you luck is coming. <laughs> That's actually Bayan Asfandiari, Antonio's dad. Oh, way to ruin it. We have an all-in at the secondary feature table. Billica at risk and dominated by Grinder. Why are two people getting up? That guy's not even all-in. The jacket thing only works once. Don't waste it, brah. When nature calls. Hey, Shaq. You're a jinx, bro. That's a terrible word, jinx. Grinder does not want his brother railing him. Spade. Ask and you shall receive. How am I gonna win this pot with that card? No idea, Alexi's got 18 outs. And he hits one of them on the river, he will double up. Oh no, Rob's gonna get it for this one. Jinx you are. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be such a jinx, Rob. On the outer tables, tournament chip leader, Nicholas Godoy playing a pot against Josh Prager. Check. Check. check, check on the flop. An ace hits on the turn. Godoy bets 15,000. Hefty bet. Now, I don't know how good this man's poker game is, but he sure knows how to live. Beer me. Prager having a fiddle. And he calls. You're supposed to keep your big chips out front, brah. Would you like to go down to the tournament floor and explain to a man who's been drinking the rules of the game? Sure. Good luck with that. <laughs> King on the river. Godoy checks. And Prager bets big, 37,000. Should be two pair or better if for value. Oh. Godoy calls. Prager doesn't look happy. I mean, he's... Godoy, two pair. Nice hand. You check this. Nice hand, nice chest, smooth call with a smooth body. Nicholas Godoy, the tournament chip leader, is just 19 years old. He's yet to notch up any live earnings. It's his first time at the PCA, and he's here courtesy of an $11 online satellite. And I, in this event, play the same as all the tournaments, because if I... Gente pro, porque el que juega este torneo es pro. Tiene que tratar de jugar de igual a igual y siempre de una forma inteligente. Wow, so our chip leader is 19 and has as many live results as his hairs on his chest. Blinds up to 1200, 2400 with a 300 ante, and we are going to sweat with Lucky Chewy. No. <laughs> Ace Jack off, and he's raising an early position to 5500. I hope our luck is better than that impression. Robert Mizraki in the cutoff will call. Okay, well, we know the Mizraki boys actually have a hand as often as the guy who killed Richard Kimball's wife. Looks like we're going heads up to this flop. So, yeah, hold on to your potatoes. We have to grit our teeth and just call down forever. Well, the flop is ace high. Yep, see you at the river. Lichtenberger continues for 6,000. We are continuing, but we are also value betting already. Mizraki calls, no real surprise there. We don't necessarily have to have an ace to continue here. Not too worried yet. Six on the turn. Don't hate that card, but again, you never know with these boys. Eight, six is always a possibility. I like the check here. All joking aside, we have to assume our hand is still good and we want someone super aggro like Robert to bet for us. He does bet 10,700. 
I think our hand is good here around 90% of the time, so yeah, we can never fold this. Lichtenberg or Kohl's? The question is, how light does Rob think we're capable of calling him? The river is a jack. Lichtenberg improves to top two. Yahtzee! He checks again. Let Rob bet again. He does bet again. Roughly half the pot, 26 and a half thousand. Snap call, ship the pot, no raise, just call, ship the pot. There's the call. And Ms. Rocky shows threes for a set. Ugh. Nice restraint us for check calling the river. I think a lot of even good players would bet the river or even check raise to try to get worse two pairs to call off. Great instincts, unlucky Chewy. Nice hand, sir. And to think I almost defended you and your brother called you a jinx. Good day, sir. I said good day. Well, find out how you can get live updates during the PCA by going to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. Welcome back to the 10th annual PokerStars.com PCA. It's day two of the main event, and the action has been fast and furious. Michael and Robert Mizraki have been applying pressure at our two feature tables, but it's not the first time these brothers have shared the spotlight. Rob is the oldest one. We all look up to him. My relationship with Mike outside of poker is pretty strong. I mean, we get along real well. I mean, we did it when we were young. There was a sibling rivalry when we were like 13, 14 years old when we played for baseball cards, comic books, Nintendo games, you name it. But now we're very close. Playing with my brother in the same tournament is kind of hard because definitely want to look after each other and make sure we both do well. You know, if I don't win it, hopefully my brother does. Rob and I actually been to a final table before. 2010 Poker Players Championship. The final table me and my brother made together was kind of awkward because we both didn't want to kick each other out. It's just an unbelievable thing for like both brothers to be on a $50,000 championship final table. At the end, he ended up knocking me out, which was kind of hard, and then I had to go sweat him. I actually even busted Rob in fifth place, and I finished in first. He was still happy for me because he got his 10%. I'm very proud of his achievements because I showed him poker and he took it to a big level and he's doing very well and he's very successful at it, so I'm very proud of him. When one of us make a final table, we're always there for each other. The Mizrakis believe the family that raises together stays as together. Michael in action again. There's been a virtual all-in from Alex Billica. Jeffrey Hakim's come along for the ride as well. Queen's way out in front for now. Ms. Rocky does have the nut flush draw. And one over card. So Bilica now does move all in. He only had 800 behind. Hakeem raises. I'm all in. All in. And Grinder shoves. Grinder attempting to isolate. Big decision for Hakeem. Now you might realize if Grinder had a big pair, he may have re raised before the flop. This is me to have to show my hand. <laughs> no matter what. This is actually worst case scenario for Hakeem, with him still being ahead, that is. I call. He calls! You call? Two players at risk. Ms. Rocky has them both covered. Jax. Wow. Billiker's in pretty good shape to triple up. Tens with a decent shot at the side pot. A lot of outs for Ms. Rocky. Any ace, any club. And there's a club on the turn! Forget everything I just said. Billiker and Hakeem drawing dead. Yeah, Mike. Right, no, I got him covered. I got more in the back. Two players busted by the grinder. Billiker still waiting to see if Mike wants to run it again. No. Nope. Ah, oh, sorry. Grinder gets there yet again. Back to the feature table, playing host to the other Mizraki, Robert. Action's been folded around to Facundo Lambri in the cutoff, and with Ace Queen off, he'll raise to 4,800. Lichtenberger has nines on the button. Chewie's gonna have to open those hidden compartments on the Falcon because it is time to ship. Sure enough, he moves all in. Just like the Kessel run. Tatiana Barausova has just joined the feature table. She folds, as does Mizraki. Call. The Lambre calls. 
I don't remember Chewbacca being particularly good at flipping. Ah, uh, you didn't see the CGI version in the special edition. My advice to you, let the Wookiee win. Well, that's an interesting board. Chewie's still ahead, but he does not want to catch a set. He's an action flop. Queen's okay for him, though. Chewie loves action. Three on the turn. Lichtenberger has to fade an ace, king, or nine on the river. It's an ace! Ouch. Damn. Good luck, guys. Andrew Lichtenberger eliminated. Lambre. The force is strong with this one. Goodbye, Chewie. Watch your fur on the water slides. <laughs> oh, man. Two in one, Joe. Still a few former champions alive, including Jake Cody. And Mosin Chirani, who took down last season's grand final. Plus an EPT runner-up, Olivier Busquet. As played by Sam Rockwell. Back to the feature table. Blind still 1,200-2,400 with a 300 ante. Action folded around to Robert Mizraki. He's raising from the cutoff. Makes it 4,800. With Queen-5, standard. Will Molson calls from the small blind with Ace-Jack. We're going heads up to the flop. Steel rays fail. Armiz does have position over Will Molson, though. King Jack nine on the flop. Molson with second pair. It's Rocky with a gut shot. <coughs> Molson checks to him, and Ms. Rocky continues for 5,600. C betting into middle pair. It's going to take at least two barrels to get this one done. Molson calls. The turn card is the nine of diamonds pairing the board. Molson checks a second time. See if Ms. Rocky gives it the double tap. Nope. He checks behind. A 10 on the river. Ms. Rocky gets there. Wow, I think Armiz was giving up and he just drilled the gutty on the river. Molson checks a third time. Will's probably checking this most of the time, even if it's not a terrible card for him. The question is will he pay off? Ms. Rocky goes for value 15,500. And Molson does not pay it off. He quickly faults. Correct fold by Molson. Not much you can really do there. Lots out there beating him already, and then the river. You hate it. These Mizraki boys have been making more hands than a mannequin factory. Robert now up to over 200,000 in chips. New player taking a seat at our feature table, Jan Veit, with his cute, cuddly shark. Jonathan Roy, ace 10 off. An early position raise to 4,800. Mizraki has kings. Most people are going to three bat here. Mizraki elects to call. Calling's fine. It's a good way to balance your range. What you Action on the blinds. They both fold. Heads up to the flop once again. And it's an ace high flop. Unlucky flop for Kings. Roy continues for 5,400. Rob's got to call at least once, considering Jonathan would be C betting a wide range. He does call. The turn card is the seven of clubs. Does complete a potential flush. Yeah, it's an ugly card for both hands. Roy slows down, he checks. Playing a bit of pot control, but he may have also convinced Rob his kings are good. Rob bet 6,300. Rob's trying to fold out weak clubs or getting hands like nines with a club to call. Jonathan still can't fold. Sure enough, he calls. So 39,000 in the middle with one card to come. And the river card is another six. Both players with a full house. No one's afraid of a flush anymore. Roy checks. Should be two easy checks here on the river. As Rocky checks behind. Come on. That's a good one. Hey, you ace, you win. I am ace. You win. Can I see what you got? Huh? Can I see what you got? We'll be on TV in a month. Yeah, we're well, just supposed to show first. I had kings. Thanks. You feel like a tool asking to see it, but Rob was supposed to show first. Jonathan just won a tournament in Montreal. Do you think he can win back to Quebec tournaments? I hate me. Roy still fourth on the leaderboard, just behind the other Mizraki, Michael. Nicholas Godoy still the tournament chip leader, now with more than 600K. Well, Eddie Sabat is 10th on the leaderboard, 
And he's involved in a hand against Michael Phelps. Eddie limped under the gun. He gibbons. Michael Phelps then raises. And Eddie calls the raise, the double gibbons. Wow, the old DG. King, queen, five flop. And Eddie leads for 6,700. Phelps calls. That's a triple gibbons, I think. The turn is a six. Eddie slows down, he checks. Phelps now bets 8,400. And we've seen him do this a lot. This is a really small bet considering the size of this pot. Eddie calls. And the river brings a jack. Action on Eddie. All in. And he shoves. That's enough to put Michael Phelps all in. Massive overbet. Wow. That's pretty sick. Clearly a big decision for Phelps. Seems like a bad spot for a bluff considering how strong Mike played it. Though maybe Eddie's just shoving on those tiny bets. Phelps' tournament life on the line. Oh. And he calls! Yeah, Eddie has the nut straight! Phelps had a set! Yep, not a huge surprise. Is that a six of those? Wow. Six freaks every time. Okay. Well, one pool Mike's not going to be spending any time in is the prize pool. The greatest Olympian of all time, KO'd by Eddie Sabat. An unusual feeling of disappointment for Michael Phelps, but it's fair to say he surpassed everyone's expectations in this event. We're into the final level of day two of the PokerStars.com PCA 10 main event. Earlier, the grinder essentially risked his tournament life in a massive three-way all-in against Jeffrey Hakim and Alex Billiker. The guy in the first position raised, I just flat with uh, ace, queen of clubs. I just had a feeling the guy in the blind was gonna move in. He moves in for 47. He flats, so I give him like tens or jacks. And I just flat behind him with ace, queen of clubs. Flop comes four, seven, eight with two clubs. He bets 55, so now it's into a dry side. If I just move him all in, he's gonna have a big decision to make because I'm trying to represent it maybe a set of eight, set of sevens, or obviously I could have the two overs with a flush draw. I'm all in. He tanks forever. I call. Oh. You'll end up making the right call with two tens, but it's probably most of the time a fault because you're probably never good in that situation. And when the hands come up, the other guy that moved in had queens, he had tens. For the big side fight, he had an ace or, or queen, but queen, I wouldn't have won the main pot. Club was a key card, and I hit the six of clubs in the turn, and that was a wrap, and I didn't even have to sweat the river out. That's how it works in the Bahamas. Catch the flush on the turn, ride the lazy river. Grinder currently third on the leaderboard after that big coup. His brother Robert, still a fixture at our feature table. And blind still 12-24. Action's been folded to Facundo Lambre. Facundo. Like that. Ace five off. He passes. Jan Veit is out. Jonathan Roy, not gonna play his button. Ace six suited for Tatiana Balausova. Raised. Raised. She raises small to big, makes it 5,000 total. Easy raise, small to big. I just wouldn't expect Robert to go quietly. Not literally, he really doesn't say much. He does defend with king four off. Okay, hand to defend with. The flop. 7-6 deuce. Tatiana, the second pair. Middle pair gonna be good here a lot. And she will continue. She bets 5,400. And Robert will raise. 11,500 total. Trying to push around the lady. Um, two things. One, she's got a lot of online experience, and two, she's Russian. She will call the race, and we will go to the turn. She looks like the type that could pull a crossbow out of a cello case. Three on the turn. Yeah, that three's probably not gonna change much for anyone, though Robert somehow got a draw now. And he bets again, 16,500. 
Now she's following her read. She's pretty much still got to keep calling. She does call. Nearly 70,000 in the middle, one card to come. And it's another seven pairing the board. That six, if it were good, is almost always still going to be good after this run out. She checks to Mizraki. Rob now trying to do the only thing he can do to win the hand. He bluffs big, 24,400. He is super polarized here, but I don't think he bet enough. Lame compliments aside, this hand's a product of image. This girl is a babe, and this is how people sometimes play against babes. The more she plays live, the more she's probably going to experience this. She calls! Nice call. Good call. King high. Tatiana is not to be trifled with. She took 60,000 off Mizraki in that hand. Maybe that'll learn you, Rob. Well, this is awkward. And it's not my fault this time. To the outer tables we go. Let's check in on Jake Cody. Involved in a hand against Adam Bits. Cody has checked the turn. Action on putting on the bits. Blue chips are worth 5,000. Yellows are 1,000. Pinks are 500. Blacks are 100. So that's a bet of 27,000. Bits, bets big. Say that five times fast. Jake calls, and the river is the queen of diamonds. Jake checks again. Not much happening on this board. Looks like Bits will bet again. Bits bets big again. 41,000. And Jake. Forward motion. Flush draw missed. I said bits bets big twice now. Well, three technically. He almost called. And now he does call. And bits shows kings, and Jake quickly marks. Jake really could have called with any pair there, heroing. What if Jake's related to Diablo? I want her to sign my copy of Juno. Eddie Sabat back in action, using the chips he won off Michael Phelps to play a hand against Byron Caverman. Eddie calling Byron's three bet. They go to the flop. King 10 deuce. Three bet and a call before the flop. You'd expect this to hit somebody. Eddie checks to the pre flop aggressor. Caverman continues for 14,000. Caverman seems pretty amused that Eddie's counting out chips. Eddie calls. Turn card, the Jack of Diamonds. Eddie checks again. Caveman does not bet again. He checks behind. Both slow down now. Weird. Three of spades on the river. Eddie checks a third time. Caveman checks it down and shows aces, but Eddie Two pair. Wow, Caverman gets his aces cracked, but has the good sense to lose the minimum somehow. So Eddie wins another pot shortly after knocking out golden boy Michael Phelps. I did end up busting him. He had a set on the turn, and I rivered a straight on him. I got shot straight. That's pretty sick. There was nothing he could do, so I kind of felt bad the way it went down. It was pretty sick. If I didn't know he was an Olympian who just crushed his gold medals, uh, I would think he was just a poker player who was just playing well. And Eddie is just a poker player who crushes American heroes with suckouts so dirty they require a silkwood shower. Back at our feature table, Jan Veit looks down at aces. Shark off the chips. Chips go in the pot. A raise to 5,100 from the hijack. There's Rocky. Has fours in the small blind. Standard spot for a just call. Eugene Kachalov has queens in the big blinds. No oh boy, somebody go get Elki. We're gonna need him to come down here and pick up Eugene. There is the re-raise, a three bet to 14,200. Veit has to be loving this.
see if he four bats or just calls. Looks like a call to me. Yep, he flats. Trying to bring Rob along for the ride. This is where things start getting a little dicey. Against two other pairs, he doesn't have the greatest equity. Robert does come along for the ride. Three-way to the flop. And by the way, when he does lose this pot, it's going to be a huge one. Well, it's a good flop for him. Mizraki has not hit a set. He checks. On this flop, the just call of aces may hurt Vite. Eugene may have been willing to get it in before the flop. Probably less so now. One overcard to his queens. He does continue, though. 11,600. And it looks like Vite might have to go for his value now. The shark comes off the chips. Oh, no. And all the chips go in the middle. Should be an easy fold for the fours. Yep. Not such an easy fold for Eugene. Yeah, this is definitely a tank situation. He can certainly afford to be wrong. No sign of Elki on the rail, but Papa Kachalov's in town. Now, Eugene's probably wondering, against an average player, how often is two queens going to be ahead here? So, how many hands that aren't sets or kings or two pairs would shove this? And unless Eugene's read is that Vite is soups crazy, I'd say not that many. Eugene faults. Frustrating fold, but don't worry, Papa will be proud. As we come to the end of day two, Eugene no longer among the chip leaders. Well, there is the tournament chip leader. Nicholas Godoy calling the all-in of Josh Prager. Prager with ace four, Godoy with deuces. It's a race. The flop gives Prager additional outs. Any queen will do it. But he doesn't hit on the river. Uh, your game. Good luck. So Prager is busto, and Godoy increases his ridiculous chip lead. What about his ridiculous chip stacks? Somebody show this kid how to stack them in 20s, will ya? Probably how to bag them, too. Look at Grinder bagging up his chips like a boss. Yeah, you show them chips, Grinder. Get in your home. Well, Michael Mizraki finishes the day third on the leaderboard with more than half a million. Also up there in the top 10, Eddie Sabat, the man who slayed Michael Phelps and Jonathan Roy. But way out in front with close to three quarters of a million is Nicholas Godoy. Well, obviously we'll be in the money tomorrow and just it's one day at a time. And so far looking good. It's just been a great last level. So just taking things easy and focusing, making sure we chip up. He could be. Chip leader tomorrow could be out, so anything can happen. It's just another poker tournament. It's just another day at work. Next time, it's bubble time. 166 remain. Yeah, I don't think I ever cash this tournament. Oh, the full of 10 is easy. Yeah, but not against you. <laughs> but 22 will miss out on the money. Well, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Everyone loves me and two people hate me. And the path to first place is finally in sight. I will not bust. I'm going to win the PCA this year.